What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to Herman in Rise of Kingdoms. Now before we jump into it, I we got to talk about something real quick, okay? Let me crack open let me crack open a cold one for you ladies and gentlemen and we're just going to chat. Hmm. This is so refreshing. It's not even alcoholic. It's just very LaCroix. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that after Herman, the only epic commanders that I haven't made dedicated videos for are Bybars and what's her name? Kiera. It's taking me such a long time to expertise her. I've also covered some of the legendary commanders that I have extensive experience with, but I definitely spend less money in this game than I think a lot of other rise of kingdoms YouTubers do. And so my commander lineup here is just not as, as powerful as some of the others. And so I'm going to need suggestions from you guys as to what types of guides that you want me to make after I have finished talking about all of the commanders that I am currently comfortable talking about right because there's a couple more right i said we have five bars with kiera i also want to do some quicker videos about like alex and a couple of other uh, legendaries maybe el Cid and things like that but ultimately right ultimately um i've covered a vast majority of the commanders in this game and so if you guys could do me a huge favor comment down below things that you're having trouble with in the game that you think i might be able to help with i do want to make a guide for um archer and a guide for infantry equipment uh, i made a video talking about cavalry equipment the other day not that many people seemed interested in that but i do still want to cover those topics but we've talked about you know i've made a beginner's guide i've made a common mistakes guide i've made a guide about sunset canyon which is basically lost canyon we've talked about golden kingdom we've talked about kvk mistakes so what haven't i covered what have i not covered that you guys need help with comments down below i do have kvk coming up in a couple of days and i'm actually super low on resources for that i don't mean resources in game which i am a little bit low on them i mean resources in real life what's in the box this is my snack box i've got like coffee cakes we've got ding i don't know ding dongs i don't even know what these are we've got uh we've got twinkies we've got rice krispie treats we've got slim jims and i'm running low right we oh we even have oatmeal cream pies and we've got some uh, cosmic brownies in here i have this for my stream but also these are my kvk supplies right everybody knows that the winner of a war goes to the players with the best snacks i, I don't that's probably not actually true but it's important okay it's important to have amazing snacks to sustain yourself when you're pulling those all-nighters playing kvk so i was thinking about doing a vlog where i go and uh i refill my snack box which uh, with a bunch of the most important snacks when you're gaming it doesn't even have to be for kvk that's an idea that i have for a video but let me know if you think that's an absolute garbage idea or if it's something that you think would be fun all right omniarch stop with your stupid rambling intro i get it i get it let's go let's go talk about herman right let's talk about herman out Herman is a commander that I've talked a lot about before. I've mentioned him in my free to play archer guide. I've also mentioned him in my Kusunoki guide and my garrison video. I mentioned him as well. I think he's even the thumbnail for that video. So we've talked a lot about Herman, but I want to just make a dedicated guide for those of you who are just looking specifically for information about this commander so first he is the commander that you get from germany if you start the game with germany you're gonna have herman right off the bat you also can get him from the germany events you also can get him from uh, holiday events by basically converting your universal epic commander sculptures into herman if you complete this event you'll get a hundred universals so that's a lot of skills that you can put on herman you could also get him from the metal store from gold keys silver keys all the normal places that you can get the rest of the epics now just like kusano Herman is an archer garrison and skill commander but he is pretty different from Kusunoki despite having the same trees with that being said let's talk about the skills on this commander his first skill is definitely his best skill it's called ambush and it deals a massive damage factor of 1150 to the target and decreases their target rage by 100 and silences the target for two seconds this is definitely the best skill on Herman and in fact this is the highest single target damage factor in the epic tier out of all the epic commanders this is the highest which is crazy because 
reducing the enemy rage by 100 and silencing them for two seconds um the way that silence works is that the enemy is not able to use their active skills during that time now if we take a look at other commanders in the epic tier like osmond the first his first skill deals 1100 right which is just a damage factor that's all it is which is nuts so the fact that herman deals even more damage and he reduces the rage by 100 and he sil silences them for two seconds totally busted right this is super good this is a very good active skill definitely get this to five before you give him a second third or fourth star his second skill is called military genius which increases archer units attack by 10 percent and march speed by 10 percent now this is the skill where he's falls off a little bit from kusunoki which i'm going to be drawing some parallels between the two because they're both same trees same troop type same rarity um kusunoki actually gets 30 percent of archer stats and that's attack and defense whereas if we look at herman he gives you yeah 10 percent attack which you know is arguably the worst stat of the three and um he increases smart speed which is good but really only 10 percent of his of this um of this skill is actually a part of the damage formula right and so 30 percent of battle stats on kusunoki 10 percent of battle stats on herman and also a 10 percent like utility stat right it is still useful to have high march speed but the problem here is that archers are countered by cavalry and cavalry commanders and cavalry units just tend to be faster than archers anyway so this 10 percent march speed bonus i don't know if that's enough to compensate to the types of armies that are probably going to be targeting herman in the open field so in this instance i would much rather have kusunoki's 30% archer stats as opposed to the 10% here but again his active skill very good and so I can maybe understand why they wouldn't want to make this second skill busted as well his third skill is called legend of the Tudor -de burger I did totally butchered that i'm so sorry uh increases garrison and watchtower attack by seven percent when this commander is serving as garrison commander i like this skill um again it is attack which i would rather it be like defense or health or something like that when we're talking about being in the garrison and again watchtower i've mentioned this in other videos watchtower buffs aren't that useful um the watchtower just dies in like four turns in a battle maybe uh and so the buff to the watchtower is not really relevant it's literally just mainly a seven percent buff to your entire garrison in terms of attack that's okay it's good i think i prefer other garrison skills on other commanders like kusunoki increases counter attack damage which is good i think if you're getting attacked by multiple people this is probably just way better and sun tzu reduces damage taken by seven percent which i also think is just much better so looking at this uh third skill it's okay for being on your wall but i don't think it's the best in the epic tier and finally we can look at the final skill which is called national hero this increases normal attack damage of troops by 10% and attacks have a 10% chance to grant an additional 100 rage this is a really good skill actually um you're just getting straight up more normal attack damage which is nice but you also have a rage engine here which is really good with a powerful active skill on herman having a rage engine is very important so it's nice that he has one built in and doesn't have to rely on one that comes from maybe his secondary commander in terms of the order of skills he should upgrade i would say bring this first skill to five then bring him to two stars and get this skill to five then bring him all the way to four stars and hope that you get this um last skill to five before the third skill i think the last skill is just better and then let's talk about his expertise literally all that his expertise does is increases the damage factor on his primary skill so prior to being expertise at just five skill points his active skill deals a damage factor of 750 it gets a really nice buff up to 1150 which is again super good for the epic tier so comparing and contrasting to kusunoki kusunoki will remove the debuffs on your army he also deals aoe damage and his damage is mostly over time with additional damage factor herman does huge damage to one target silences them reduces their rage and also has a built-in rage engine however kusunoki has more archer stats now we're going to talk about some of the pairs for herman and i think a lot of them are going to be pretty obvious to you guys if you've watched a lot of my commander guides but it's worth noting that even though i'm comparing and contrasting the two of course they are great commanders to pair together with that being said let's talk about talent builds and i'm actually going to show you the talent builds that i have on my kusunoki because again they are the same trees and my herman is only level 59 whereas kusunoki is 60 so it's going to be a little bit better and easier for you guys to follow along so this is my first build this build is a pure 
archer build um this is a build you obviously want to do with all archers and really any build that i show you here is is going to want to have full archers just to maximize the amount of stats that you get from herman now one change that i would make to this build is i would actually remove the three points in latent power it depends on who you're pairing uh herman with if you're pairing with kusunoki maybe you want to leave this but i would say for the most part you want to remove these three points and i would put one more point into heraldic shield and then i would put the other two points into health of all troops i think that's just overall a better build but regardless um this is obviously a full archer build and you're getting a lot of great talents here I actually think the archer talent tree is very very good um venomous sting over here uh is just amazing obviously you're getting eight percent um active skill damage for both primary and secondary you also get whistling arrows which only has a 10 percent chance of going off so it can go off randomly but if it does go off during skill damage you get a 25 percent buff on that which is insane right and this is giving you a 25 percent damage increase for all types of attacks so normal attack counter attack everything like that but again this is going to be most useful if it times up with an active skill which is you know amazing but it, it is pretty random so it's it's worth getting it's worth talking about because it is good but it's a bit random sometimes you'll see just damage spikes that come out of nowhere and i kind of prefer consistency but it's still good when you take the average across all fights that you'll do with this talent build now phoenix tail arrows will give you some little bit of extra damage factor which is nice you'll get razor sharp which gives you some nice additional rage as well as burning blood over here you get some nice attack as well as health with armed and armored and you also get uh, arrows knocked which will deal nice damage if you do end up dropping below 50 percent in the open field you obviously don't want to do that but um if you do get, end up getting caught out there and also um, we have to talk about rejuvenate another rage engine amazing i love that on herman because he already has one and then of course tactical mastery increases active skill damage which is just amazing so this is a really great build with the modifications that i talked about before obviously full archers let's talk about another possible build this one maximizes rage regeneration so here we we see we removed the points in latent power we went all the way up to feral nature because not only do you get rejuvenate but feral nature just gives you another uh chance to get a hundred rage which is super super good that comes out to about i think 10 rage uh per second or something like that because in theory this is going to pop once every 10 turns so 100 divided by 10 is 10 rage obviously that's not actually how it works but um that's pretty much how it would technically be mathematically over time you do still get venomous sting and you do still get the razor sharp rage generation which is amazing and of course you get full quiver as well so you get a ton of archer stats still uh with this build but it's focused primarily on rage regeneration so whichever one of these two builds you prefer i do think that um you get more stats for archers by going this route but this one obviously you regenerate more rage so it depends on who you're pairing herman with but whichever build you go with is going to be very very good i think the differences between the two are relatively minor because the stats that you lose out over here um the damage output is going to be increased with active skill damage so it, it really depends um on on who you're pairing with but really i think they're pretty similar if you were to do the math i probably would lean more towards this build honestly um but again it depends uh, we're gonna talk about some different commander pairings and where this might be a little bit more useful finally let's talk about a garrison build right because this is technically something that herman can do i talked about him in my uh, garrison video we go all the way all the way to the end of the skill tree the reason for this is because we're picking up a lot of talent points um off on the sides these little points are going to apply to all of your troop types rather than just archers and that's why we didn't go very far into the archer tree um because you only a quarter of your troops theoretically are going to be archers if your city is getting hit we also went and got the front row of all of the talents here we avoided the two watchtower talents because again i think watchtower buffs are very weak and then we went and grabbed uh, attack for all troops defense for all troops and health for all troops because again it's for all troops now we did go up here and grab arrows knocked because if you notice this says um when you're reduced to 50 percent strength all attack of all troops is increased by nine percent which is not just for archers this is this is literally worded saying all troops right so all the troops in your entire city will be buffed with a nine percent attack increase that's amazing because when you're getting rallied as a city as a garrison you're probably going to drop below 50 percent strength unless you're online and you teleport away at that point so this is a nice buff to have and then finally we also have rapid fire because this increases normal attack damage by one and a half percent which 
again this is not specific for archers so this is good to have when you're on your wall now you could make the argument that maybe you should take the three points out of here take a couple of points out of feral nature take away all these little tiny points over here and then make your way up to know thy enemy if you think that your city is going to get swarmed now that's definitely a possibility but again and i've mentioned this in other videos before if you're using an epic on your wall such as herman and you're a lower power free to play player you you might just take a single rally and that's it right so it's up to you however you think you're going to get attacked if you think that a t5 player is just gonna swarm you with five armies then yes definitely go and get no other enemy it will help you a lot more than the build that you see here but if you're just gonna take a single rally then this is probably a better option oh man this is really coming in clutch right now this is just it it's saving me man it's saving me all right let's talk about some commander pairings for herman now obviously we talked about in the talent builds right he's gonna be a full archer commander so any commander that has full archers uh or archer skills right is going to be a good choice for herman now that means he could be paired with isong a right isong a is a great secondary for pretty much everybody however the problem with this pairing <coughs> is that Herman is going to be targeted in the open field very quickly, right? Herman is a very squishy commander. By that, I mean he has a 10% attack buff, no uh, no defense increase for archers, no health increase for archers. He's an epic commander, right? He's very squishy in the open field. Plus, people want to get rid of Isong Ye. So you could do a Herman Isong, but just be careful because he will be targeted very fast. You also could do a Herman Boudica if you're going to play very early game. Now, theoretically, you would want a full archer build because you're going to do archer talents, but it's worth noting that Boudica doesn't care which, which troop types. And honestly, it really is up to you, but you do want to go again. If you're doing the full archer talent tree, you absolutely want Herman primary with that uh, archer build. Um, the reason that you could do Boudica in the very, very, very early game if you're free to play is because she also deals huge single target damage factor and also reducing the rage by 100 so you're having a huge rage reduction with this pairing which is really good this is a nice single target debuffing pair plus it's decreasing the attack of that enemy by 25 percent for two seconds she also has a chance to increase the entire damage of the army which is great and she heals and restores rage which that's another rage engine to stack on top of herman's rage engine which is really good right so this is a good pairing um again very early on pairing because there's not that many archer stats right and so you're gonna have way lower stats than the other armies that you fight in the open field but um if you think you can be sneaky and not get targeted in the open field which again with this pairing probably unlikely but you could be doing some nice rage debuffing you can be regenerating your rage at a crazy rate with some healing i think this is a cool pairing for very early game you could technically do a, like a sun Tzu primary herman secondary i don't think that's a great pairing but there's nothing really inherently wrong with it i just think that sun Tzu could be paired with better commanders overall now of course we could do a kusunoki primary herman secondary or vice versa i really do think kusunoki should be the primary in this instance because he will remove all negative effects from your army and then herman will hit them with his big single target damage factor which is just better right if you're gonna have debuffs on your army removed you want them removed before you deal damage with something like herman's primary so i think kusunoki primary herman's secondary is probably the best way to go of course if you do build um kusunoki with the full skill tree it's also worth noting that um, the clarity talent here is going to increase the skill damage by six percent for herman's big single target damage factor so that's also worth noting and why herman might be better as a secondary it just depends on your build for kusunoki but in general i do think that he's better as the secondary slot this is going to be the go-to pairing right for free-to-play players kusunoki and herman just a really great pair because the the biggest downside of herman is that he doesn't have that many archer stats but kusunoki brings that to the table and herman stacks on top of that another 10 percent archer attack with some march speed that kusunoki doesn't have so this is a really great pairing for free-to-play players it's really the best pairing that they can do of course there is kiara we'll talk about her in just a second a really interesting pairing you could do would be a herman primary osman secondary with a full archer build now the reason that this is uh, totally possible and also interesting is because we talked about how they both have the two highest single target damage factors in the epic tier right and so you smash them with herman single target damage factor then a couple turns later osman smashes him with his huge damage factor but wait there's more every time an active skill goes off osman hits them with a sort of osman skill attack so that means that you have 
uh herman hit him for 1150 then osman hit him for 400 then osman hits him again for 11 1100 then he hits him again for 400 right so we're doing a ton of single target damage factor with osman plus you're gonna bring 10 percent more archers right which is gonna be really good because you're they're all gonna be getting the um benefits of the archer talent tree from herman so this is a really interesting pairing plus herman has rage regeneration which is what osman wants he has it in the archer tree he has it in the skill tree and he also has it on his fourth skill now the downside of using osman as a secondary is that he doesn't offer anything to archers so he's a very generic commander he's not buffing the archers uh the archer stats like somebody uh like kusunoki for example would do that or somebody even like kiara would do that as well so it's a very interesting build but i think there are other better options but you could totally try it right early game see what you can do with this i think this would be a really interesting pairing because you're just going to be rapid firing just massive skill damage at a single target i think that would be interesting to see how that goes next we got to talk about el cid right i think uh an el cid is a great pairing now if you're free to play you could have like a 5511 El Cid. That would be a pretty decent pairing. The reason for this is because El Cid is basically the legendary version of Herman. And having a Herman primary, El Cid secondary effectively gives you a three second silence. And three seconds is it's like 30% of the time that that the enemy is is uh it, fighting in the open field how do i even explain that so under normal rage regeneration requirements every 10 turns ish you're going to get enough rage to um basically do an active skill but three out of those 10 turns technically speaking uh, they're going to be silenced or disabled or something like that right because you have the two seconds from herman so one two and then on that on the turn that they would stop it being silenced they're actually hit by el sid's one second disable which is an even more powerful version of the silence right so silence has to do with active skills and not shooting off those active skills during that time uh, the disable is not only can't they activate their active skills but they also can't do any normal attack damage for that single turn so this is a really unique build that is only possible with a herman primary else it's secondary there's no other way to get a three second silence in the entire game so this is a very interesting pairing uh, where you're just basically constantly stunning the enemy for three seconds at a time and that really can have a, a profound effect even as a free-to-play player like i said you would really want to shoot for a 5511 el cid technically you could do that combo with a 5111 el cid but his second skill is just good and i would want you guys to get this to five before bringing him any farther plus again single target damage factor right and it's worth noting that herman's single target damage factor is better than el cid's and el cid's is legendary right now he also has that 10 percent chance of dealing another thousand uh, damage factor so el cid is still a good commander he is a legendary so he's hard to level up but he's basically the legendary version of herman and so having them as a pair is really good el cid 5511 as a secondary would be decent plus you're getting an extra 10 percent archer defense still less archer stats than if you were to use an expertise to kusunoki worth noting but um i think that unique combo is something that is worth trying out now obviously kiara is another really great option for herman for the same reason that kusunoki is now it's worth noting that kiara's primary skill deals more skill damage to the enemy when she's expertise than kusunoki's does but she loses out on the uh, removing debuff effects right so you're trading off the the removal of debuffs for an increase in aoe damage factor which is nice again that's with the expertise without the expertise she actually does less damage technically speaking if you're hitting three targets uh, because she does reduce each additional target by 15 percent uh, damage so keep that in mind but she also gives you 20 percent of archer stats which is less than kusunoki as well however she also has the final the fourth skill um literally gives you a 10 percent chance to increase skill damage dealt by up to 80 percent for three seconds which is basically it's very similar uh to sun tzu's final skill right so this is sort of a hybrid between kusunoki and sun tzu ish right and so the increase in skill damage is going to be really useful for herman so you could also pair uh kiara with herman as well great pairing i don't know who should be primary who should be secondary uh honestly i don't think it really matters unless you are building full skill tree in which case you might want herman primary but 
I I guess yeah, because he would I guess he would want them maybe silenced right before Kiara's attack goes off. I don't know. I don't really think it matters too much. Now, of course, you could pair uh Edward of Woodstock or Tamiris or Tamaris Tamaris. I always pronounce that wrong, or you could pair it with Ramses as well. Now we're talking about legendary commanders that as free to play, you're probably not going to either have or invest too heavily in. It's worth noting that a 5111 Ramses is actually a decent commander, right? Um, we talked about this in our free to play archer guide, so check that out if you have more questions about Ramses as a 5111. Uh, same thing with Edward, though. Now, the thing is that Edward, you really want him primary, so are you gonna have a, pri a primary as 5111? I don't know that just doesn't seem like a great investment to me in terms of legendary commander sculptures but you, it's worth noting that you could obviously do these pairings as well now i'm not going to talk about equipment here because i will probably be making an archer equipment video very very soon but the long story short is you just want the most amount of archer stats for that commander as possible for the lowest amount of rarity because those are the easiest to get but keep an eye out for that archer equipment video with that being said guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully i have earned a subscription and a like on the video and make sure you click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video don't forget to comment down below any more questions that you have about herman or uh, any suggestions that you have things that you're having trouble with in rise of kingdoms that you want my insight on or even just other guides to other games maybe let's play videos i could totally do i've been thinking about doing let's plays for like world of warcraft or things like that so definitely let me know in the comment section below other content that you want to see from me as always my social media links are in the description below so my instagram my twitter my discord and my twitch channel i do live stream rise of kingdoms at least once a week and that's a great way to stop by and ask me any questions that you have in the moment so make sure you follow me over there and on instagram and everything else and as always there's a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac that's how i'm playing right now and i noticed the least amount of crashes and issues playing on my pc than anywhere else blue stacks has been my favorite emulator for a long time and again it's free so click that link in the description below to give it a try with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on i will talk to you guys again soon peace